The following is a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. And good Sunday morning to everybody out there. Thank you so much for listening and making us part of your Sunday. This is your life, your money. I'm Chris Creston, and I'm joined, as always, by Kelvin, the money guy. Don't forget, you can always visit his website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask, K-E-L-V-I-N dot C-A. There's a little schedule the call link there that you can set up a time and date of your choosing for your call with Kelvin. Or if you got a burning question, you just want to give him a ring, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. The old-fashioned way, picking up a couple of cans and a string and making the, the connection with Kelvin that way. 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. How you doing, first of all? And then we'll get into yeah. some chat about the markets. Actually, good. Thanks for asking. In the last three weeks, it's been in the world, I guess, with the war and out of the pandemic, we hope. And I went out the other day and, uh, you know, I, I wasn't wearing my mask and some people were, some people weren't. It's one of those things, but I always carry with me just in case, you know, that, uh, yeah, just, just for so, right? You know, but it's, you know, we were just talking before the show about two years ago, March 17th, state of emergency. And who would have known yeah. two years, yeah, two years later, and I'm watching golf and everybody's there and watching Formula One, which is today. Tons of people there. Uh, the Leafs are losing. Things are back to normal. <laughs> 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 and the Raptors are on fire in more ways than yeah. one, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really funny, eh? Yeah, and you know, it, thought, it really yeah. has been a bit of a, a roller coaster ride for yeah, all yeah. of us, and um, finding you know this moment where you know it's it's like this morning waking up after it's been relatively warm, getting some spring like weather, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden snow. Um, so <laughs> depending on where you are in in our audience, <laughs> you've woken up to some snow, and yeah. and I think that that's sort of where we are. We're, we're opening up; things are feeling like they're good. And, you know, we're thinking, well, nothing can stop us now, a war. And so that kind of right. freaks people yeah. out a little bit, too. So, you know, planning to sort of decide what's going to happen. What do I do with my money? What do I do with mm -hmm. that snow in my driveway? Is it going to melt or can I can I do I have to go out there and shovel it? Well, hopefully the, the problems that we have in both situations go away on their own or and they right. don't affect our lives in the long term. Well, well, when you think about those things you've just said, the stock markets is exactly the same. Like we can't control the war, we can control the pandemic, we can't control that stuff. So you can control what you do and how you behave. So as as the markets go up and down, I think you really need to control. People really need to control their behavior and their feelings because, like I say, feelings is what dictates the outcome. So try and when it comes to money, retiring, things like that, try and. Let your feelings stay away and deal with your financial advisor and let them put things in perspective for you. So before we start, I thought I'd do a recap of the markets and we're hearing about how bad it's going and things like that. So when I look at year to date at the Dow Jones and the S&P, uh, they're down about 4%. Two weeks ago, they were down about 10%. The NASDAQ is down around 9%. And RTSX is up 3%. So really, when you look at things on a broader scale, we're okay, we're not bad. Um, you know, so don't if you panic, don't panic too much. And this is where your financial advisor comes in rather than the robo-advisors because you can actually pick up the phone and call them and have a chat with them. And they can talk you through your feelings so you don't have to worry about things like that. So the last... Probably, I would say, six months. I'm getting a lot of people calling me from these shows or just clients about retiring. What do I do? When can I retire? So I thought to myself, there's so many mis common mistakes um, that people make in retirement and in life, you know. And what are some of the common things? So if we know what the common things are, maybe we can try and avoid them or, you know, kind of massage them a bit so we don't run into all those problems. Remember, 
everything leads everything leaves clues like success leaves clues failures leave clues so if we could kind of sort that out in our head we'll be okay you know there so there's there are many pitfalls that really negatively affect and will ultimately derail our retirement and the biggest problem is and knowing about them is really half the battle because you only know what you know so if we kind of try and know what we don't know into retirement well maybe that'll solve our maybe not solve 100 percent, but may solve quite a bit of it right so yeah if you're first, aware of the potential mm-hmm. things that could trip you up along the way you're going to be right. that much more protective of yourself or that much more you know aware of sort of where the lines are and make sure you don't color outside of them and make sure right. that you do the right thing and to have a financial advisor on your side obviously well like i'm looking at one kelvin the money guy obviously <laughs> is someone who's been in the business for decades and has the you know benefit of experience in seeing what other people have done and the ability to then help you navigate your finances mm-hmm. accordingly and and that's a good point i mean we've been doing this for longest time forever i think in my mind so if you're 10 years away from retirement or 10 years into retirement, you know, that's really a danger zone. Because if you don't navigate properly, you, when you get there, it's like, oh my God, I got to work again. Or when I do get there, I'm into it. Oh my Lord, I didn't, I didn't have enough. So you really need to have a, I think it's a mindset. So having the same philosophy and mindset in retirement that you did in your working years, will, you know, will help you. Um, you know, you, when you get in that paycheck, um, everything is going good. But when you get that last paycheck, then what happens? Then what do you do? So you have to start looking at things differently when you are um, it, you know, 10 years before you retire or five years before you retire. I don't know if you remember, but we did a show uh, during the pandemic, uh, and, the, and the show was... Uh, the pandemic was a pre-retirement. This is what's going to happen when we retire. We're going to stay home. Right, right. Like a dress <laughs> rehearsal for retirement. Yeah. Because yeah. you can't go out. You don't have anywhere to go all day. <laughs> what are you going to do with your right. time? And some of us had to go on the serve, unfortunately, because we didn't have the income. So that's what happens when you get into uh, retirement. You're not going to have the same. You're not going to have the same income, right? If you didn't plan properly or a little bit less. But then what happens is. The same thing happens. You're still going to have bills, your electricity bill, your cable bill, your property tax. So, so that retire. So we need to think back in the pandemic. What was it like? How did I feel? Because that was like a re- I was retired. I stayed home with my wife and kids all day. And what the hell? What did I do? Right. So it's all a mindset. So the first thing I always suggest that people do when they retire is to decompress. You know, remember we started going to school and working since we were like, I don't know, 10 years old maybe. And that's all we did. Got up in the morning and went and did something. Now I retired and tomorrow, guess what? I have nothing to do. So we need to decompress. You need to take the longest vacation you've ever taken in your life and sit back and reflect. Become an outsider looking into your life and reset. You know, just sit back and Think about things, whatever, you know, you want, whatever you want to do. So you need to to do the same thing in retirement. You need to decide how you're going to spend the rest of your life. And remember, we are going to live longer in retirement than we did in our working years, right? Because of our health and, you know, we're eating better, we're exercising, we're all that kind of stuff we're doing. So we really need to sit and and give it some thought. So really decompressing is really the, the, the biggest mistake, I think, in retirement. Many, uh, many people that retire, clients, their biggest thing is, ah, oh, man, I don't know what to do. After two years of retirement, they want to go back to work because they really don't know what to do. Right? You can't golf all the time. Or plan yeah, as evidenced by the weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, interestingly enough, I'm going golfing today after this. <laughs> You're a braver man than I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going indoor golfing, but still, I mean, 
when when you retire, there's so many things that you really, you know, we live in the best country in the world. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you do some proper planning, um, you'll be okay financially. It's the other part of your life that's going to be a problem. That's going to cause a problem like health issues, things like that. So you really have to make sure that you mentally ready for retirement. That's what I find, right? Remember, there's a 1,000 Canadians turning 65 every day. Wow. So it tells us, you know, we're, we're a young country, but old people. So, we, you know, we're going to live longer, so we've got to do some strategic planning here, right? Now, because we're living longer, the second mistake I find, and actually maybe after the break we'll go into it, the second mistake is because, like I say, we're living till, you know, 85, 90 years old. What if we don't have enough money, right? So, Yeah, that would be a big mistake. And, you know, you talk about getting in the right mindset, and one of the best ways to have a easy mindset is making sure that your money is taken care of and one of the ways to do that is get a financial advisor on your side so give yours a call or if you don't have one give kelvin the money guy a call 416-457-7526 that's 416-457-PLAN and you can always visit his website askkelvin.ca that's ask k-e-l-v-i-n.ca and you can schedule a call there at a time and date of your choosing or like i said the old-fashioned way 416-457-7526 a whole lot more of your life your money coming up here on 640 toronto you are listening to a paid commercial program unless otherwise identified the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. Who's Calvin? He's the money guy. He's one of the top financial advisors in the country and an overall great guy. You can always visit his website too at askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. You can schedule a call on that website too. So hit the schedule a call link and you choose a time and date of your choosing. Or if you got a question, there's no time like the present. Give him a ring, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. I just jot that down because, you know, you don't know what your question's going to be. You don't just, you know, you're not thinking about your money right now, but something might come up later on in the mm-hmm. day or in the week, and you think to yourself, you know what, I'm going to give this Kelvin guy a call, 416-457-7526. And we've been talking about retirement, and you know, one of the things that you said – Kelvin is, you know, if you're 10 years to retirement or 10 years into retirement, that's when you got to be sort of really careful. That's when you got to make sure that Mm -hmm. those ducks are in a row. And we're talking about some of the mistakes that people make as well and uh, and going through them. And you teased before the break that we're going to talk about, you know, you're going to live a long time. So, you know, knock on wood, we've got, you know, we're living in a great country. You've got mm-hmm. access to great health care. And then you're, that's taken care of. You're going to do well health wise if you're making the right decisions. And then, then you might run out of money, right? So it's right. a kind of a double edged yeah. sword. You've done really right. well. You're living a long time. You're enjoying your retirement. Really, that's the juice that all this runs on are those finances. You want to make sure you don't run out of it. So, you know, one of the thing I see is that we, like I say, live your money life backwards and your life forward. So figure out when I get to that retirement zone, how much money do I need? Um, and people don't do that. I mean, we, we in the financial planning business, over the last, I would say, 25 years, we were accumulating. Our clients were accumulating money because they're in their 30s and 40s and, you know, 50s. And now they're in the decumulation year. So how do we protect our money and do things like that? So many times people try and become very, very um, conservative when they, when they invest their money. Because they don't keep in mind that they're going to live till they're 85, 90. So their investment choices are different. You know, imagine you're living your life, your life and you're making 100 grand when you're working. Then you retire and you get like 50, 60. Well, that's a big shortage there, right? So many people's lifestyle might have to change and your dreams might have to change. So 
you know, you may need to ex to work extra or work a part time job when you retire. So I think the biggest thing with not running out of money is take a proactive approach on planning your income that you need and want when you retire. I mean, that's a very crucial step. They did a survey, you know, Chris Bemo, and they found that um, most Canadians want about 4,000 bucks to live on when they retire. So what I say is look at your CPP, look at your old age. People should go and set up a Service Canada account and they'll tell you, you know, what your CPP will be in your old age when you're 60, 61, and so on. And now you know it's certain what, you, what you're going to get, right? Wife and husband. And then figure out what your shortage is going to be. And use certain rules in our, you know, in what we do. Um, and, and math or numbers, you know, don't lie, right? The numbers always come out. It's like everything else. If you listen to Fox, you're going to have one opinion. If you listen to CNN, you're going to have another opinion. And who's right, who's wrong, I don't know. When it comes to retirement planning, don't do those kind of things. Look at numbers and know certain things. We know to give you $1,000 when you're 65 for the time you're time you're 65 to 90, you need about 220,000 somewhere earning you 5%. So if you know you're going to be short, you know, $2,000, then you need about 500 grand somewhere. Might seem like a lot of money, but if you've got time, it won't be. And if you plan it out properly, you will be. So I think you need to sit down with your advisor and chart that out and look at the next 30 years of your life rather than the last 30 and see what you got to do today so that you don't run into those type of problems when you get older, as you move into your 60s and 70s, because you can't look back, you know. And one of the biggest thing I find is, you know, the markets. What do I do with the stock markets? I said in the beginning, we're down about 4%. Um, and people tend to not to remember certain things. For example, 2008, you know, 2018, uh, 2020, we had big drops in the stock markets. And it's frightening to know that I'm 65 or 70 and all my money is there. What do I do? So one thing people might want to look at is how am I investing my money? What if in the next five years we have another 08 or 2018 or 2020 again? Then what happens to me? Well, I'm old, not old, but I can't look back. I have to go back and work. So many people listening should have a look at what they call the GMWB, the Guaranteed Minimum Withdrawal Balance Plan. And what it is, it's the old-fashioned annuity. Many people that are listening that are older probably remember what an annuity is. But annuities work well when interest rates are high, and as you know, interest rates are really low. So I think we need to discover and look at these GMWBs, and they're only run by insurance companies. The problem with many people is when they deal with banks, nothing wrong with banks, but the bank advisor is not licensed to deal with GMWBs because GMWBs are only run by insurance companies, so you have to have your insurance license. And those are some of the pitfalls when you, you know, when you kind of have one-sided view of things. Right. The guy at the bank can only sell you what he's selling, right? So mm -hmm. he's not going to be able to, to sell you some other kind of option. So right. to know that that's out there, you've got to know who to go to to, to make that kind of mm -hmm. connection. Right. And, and the, the one of the biggest reasons that I see that, you know, people feel in retirement is because, you know, they run out of money before they run out of life and then they're worried and they got to think about, you know, what do I do and things like that. So things heading into, when you're heading into retirement, okay, you want to do certain things. For example, you know, when you retire, your income is going to be low. So you won't qualify for things like lines of credit, reverse mortgages, car loans, things like that. So why not set up lines of credits and things like that right now? You don't have to use it, but it's there if you need it, right? Um, and, and that's one of the big problems I find with, uh, with older people when they retire is the banks don't like you. The banks don't right. like you. Yeah, I don't think the banks like a lot of us. If you're self-employed, <laughs> they don't like you. If you're older, they don't like you. <laughs> I think they like you if you're in debt. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. And if you've got a predictable income to uh, yeah. to pay that debt, <laughs> yeah, uh, pay your minimum payments on that right. debt. But yeah, that's something yeah. that I hadn't thought about. Is you know you don't have that income that you used to have, so you might have been able to you know demand a certain amount of money if you wanted a line of, of credit or something yeah. like that. And then you go to the bank that you've been doing business with since you know I I was on the phone with the bank the other day, and the guy on the other line said that I'd had my account since before he was born. I'm not that old. So I can imagine if you're in retirement age, you could you look at the, the person across the counter from you at the bank and say, I've been at this bank like three of you. So why is it that you can't help me out now? But it's your income. You don't have the level to make that well, happen. Yeah, well, there, that's another thing I get is that, well, I've been dealing with the bank for 30 years. They're going to give me a loan. I don't care about that. You're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, they retire to go to the bank. Well, sir, you don't have enough income. Can't give you nothing. So one of the things with retirement planning, it's not just the stock market. You know, many people think it's always the stock market up and down and worried and so on. It's all these other things like setting up the lines of credits, getting your credit in order, getting your ducks in order before you retire. Because when you do, it's too late. You can't you can't look backwards and things like that. So so make sure when you look at your portfolio, you look at GMWBs. If you don't know what it is, call me or talk to your advisor. After the break, we'll get into one of the four deadly mistakes um, that we make. And again, they're all big mistakes. So you have to prioritize what you do. So again, after the break, we'll probably go we'll go on about the, the fourth one. And yeah, if you've got questions about that GMWB, give Kelvin a call at, at 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And don't forget, you can always visit his website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask K E L V I N dot C A. More with that fourth mistake that Kelvin teased coming up on the other side of the break here on 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. And thanks again for making us part of your Sunday. I'm Chris Creston, joined as always by Kelvin, the money guy. His website is askkelvin.ca. That's ask k e l v i n dot c a, and you can give him a ring at four one six four five seven seven five two six. That's four one six four five seven plan. Or like the voice people said, you can give us a call right here live on the air if you've got a question. If you've got a question, likely someone else does too, or likely has the same question out there in the audience. So uh, we will take your calls live. Uh, otherwise, we got a lot to talk about. So we've been going on about some uh, mistakes that people make um, as they approach retirement or early on in retirement and you know how to avoid those pitfalls and how to make sure that you're making the proper choices to make sure that your retirement savings last as long as your retirement does. Kelvin, we were talking about, uh, we're going into the fourth one, the fourth deadly mistake, four out of six, I believe is what we're, we're, we're going with here. Yeah. So, so what I find is that, um, you know, people, tend to take a lot of risk, you know? I mean, there's a risk in not taking a risk, right? But certainly, you know, we're familiar with the stock market. That's all we hear about with the Dow Jones, TSX, the NASDAQ. Oh my God, it's down 500 points. And, and there's a lot of risk there to consider. So if you're managing your money on your own, I think as you head into retirement, you need to seek out an advisor um, and hopefully an independent advisor that don't just sell your products um, because there's many things besides the markets, like I said, that goes into what you do. So for example, interest rates going up and down, price of gas going up and down, oil going up and down, credit ratings. Maybe your credit rating is not that good as you head into retirement because of things that you did before. Um, inflation. We never, we never heard that word inflation until this year last year going into this year, right? Some people don't even know what it is. Um, so price of gas, you know, so tools, certain tools need to be in place 
to avoid some of those risks. And like we talked before the break, lines of credits, go set one up now uh, because your income's good. Things are happening that's good, good to you, you know, so do that now. Don't wait. So, so listen, you have two choices from what I see. All of us have. We have two choices. We can plan for it or we can ignore it, right? But whatever the, whatever the risk, whatever that risk or occurrence it is, you know, it's going to happen whether you plan for it or not. If you look at, you know, I think we need to look at our options <clears throat> and see what we can do differently. And if we do that, I think we're 90% there. So it's all sitting down and figuring it out, right? <clears throat> figuring out, putting your money in the right place and making sure that it, you know, it is able to survive and able to continue growing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even to hear saying, oh, the market's down 4% or something like that. I know it, it, it can be scary to think of that, but mm -hmm. you know, would you, would you celebrate? Would you buy a new car because you got <laughs> the market was up 4% and, <laughs> and also to look at it in year to date, I, I think, and you know, without having you know, the numbers right in front of me, I think we're still riding higher than we were a year ago today. Uh, when yeah, well, the well, think about it. In five years now, will the market be higher or lower than what it is today? So, so, so if you if you look back at the last hundred years, right, the markets are up seventy two percent of the time, or seven point two percent, seven point two years over ten years. If you look at the last fifty years, we've had twenty nine corrections, right. Um, if you look at a lot, if you look in the past, what has happened will dictate, it wouldn't, I mean, history tends to repeat itself. So we look forward rather than backwards, you know. So, so the market risk is really not really a risk. It, it is, but it isn't. I think the risk is not knowing what you're going to do when you retire. I think not knowing, um, you know, where you're going to live. Am I going to live in my house? I have to, I'm going to downsize and move up to Costa Rica. I don't know what I'm going to do. So those are the kind of things that you need to know. So like I said, you can either plan for it or you can ignore it. But whatever you choose to do, it's going to come back to either bite you or help you live a great retirement life. Yeah, well, you know, the, when you decide not to take a risk, you're still taking a risk. There's an opportunity mm -hmm. cost in not playing in the system, right? In not right. trying to make your money. You can say, hey, I'm just gonna shove all my money under the mattress, but it's not gonna grow. In fact, with inflation, it's gonna shrink. It's like, it's the saying, it's like, I think I can do that. Oh man, I think I can't do that. Well, you're right. <laughs> Whatever you choose to do, you're right. You know what I mean? The fifth peril I find in, in retirement planning is, although we live in the best country in the world, I think, there's medical things costs that may happen to you. So because we're living longer, you know, what if, what if we have to go into a home when we're in our 80s? What do we do then? Do we sell our house? Or did we, pro or did we pre the, take some proactive planning and set up a line of credit so I can use that money to go into the home and then eventually sell the house if I wish? So we really need to do some forward thinking. I mean, medical expenses and things, you know, like I say, overhead and things like that cover a lot of it. But the problem is if we, if we, our health happens and we can't you know, look after ourselves, where are we going to get the money to do that? So I think we need to take a look at that. Um, and, and if you do it properly, you'll be okay. Right. So look at things like lines of credits, reverse mortgages. You know, where can I get income if something like that happens? So really do some pre planning than anything else. Um, I think people can look at um, you know, our you know, so called quote unquote universal health care in this country mm -hmm. and get a little bit complacent about the costs that you may have um, right. that are associated with even, you know, keeping staying home if you've got limited mobility converting your home into something that you can stay in it right. costs money sure everything costs money so you have to figure out how am i going to pay for these things i'm going to have to cash in my rsps what am i going to do there's another thing rsps rsps might not be the best thing for you when you turn 70 71 because we do all this planning and all these things and we don't 
think about the tax man. And because of the pandemic, that tax man is coming for you. So you better start maybe looking at your RSPs and see how much I got in there. If I got a lot of money in there, maybe I want to pay a little bit of the tax today to avoid a lot of the tax down the road. So these are, these are the, the deadly mistakes that people make when they, when they don't plan their retirement. So people like us in the financial planning world, we look at a holistic part of your life, not just the stock markets going up and down. You know, people like me, I'm more of a behavioral advisor that try and get you away from feelings. Don't look at your feelings too much when it comes to money because you're going to be very disappointed. And when you have feelings, you've already dictated the outcome. I feel this is going to happen, so guess what? It's probably going to happen, right? So, so what I find is, you know, <laughs> there are many pitfalls that, may, that will negatively affect and ultimately derail your retirement. And not knowing about them is half the battle, right? So you have two choices to make. You can plan for it or you can ignore it. But whatever that risk or occurrence it is, it's going to happen to you. So if you look at your options and see what you can do differently, you're about 90% there. So do some proactive planning, ideally five to 10 years before retirement. So you can walk out the door on that last day knowing that, man, I'm going to live great into retirement because I did all the planning, right? So after the break, we'll talk about the six and final deadly mistake I think that people make before retirement or into retirement. And this is a big one, so stay tuned. We'll be talking about that one coming up on the other side of the break here on Your Life, Your Money. Don't forget to visit Kelvin's website, askkelvin.ca. That's ask, K-E-L-V-I-N.ca. Or you can give him a call, 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. Stay tuned to 640 Toronto. You are listening to a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto. And thank you so much for joining us and making us part of your Sunday morning. I am Chris Cresson, joined as always by Kelvin, the money guy. Visit askkelvin.ca. That's ask, K-E-L-V-I-N dot C-A to find out more about Kelvin, the money guy, and to book a call with him. Or you can give him a ring anytime at 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And Start your plan. Make sure you've got a plan because that's half the battle. And as we uh, uh, chart the six mistakes about uh, of your retirement, I think that a plan might come up somewhere in this final mistake that we're going to talk about. Well, that's the that Chris the the final biggest mistake I find that people make, not just with money but with life. You know, we we don't have a plan. You don't have a plan to get us where you want to get to. Imagine, you know, getting your car um, and just driving out across the country without having some kind of map or some guide or direction where you're going. We're going to stop for gas here. We're going to maybe have lunch there. There's a hotel here. Or or just, I'm going to get in the car and drive west and see what happens. Well, you know, there's an old saying, if you don't know where you're going... How do you know when you get there, right? So a plan is knowing exactly what you can do and what is available to you. Everything can be resolved by having a written plan. Now, plans can be changed, right? Like life gets in the way, things happen, you know, things change that you never expected. But if you don't have some type of a written plan down, you're you're never going to get it. They say what, and don't just have it in your head because they say what gets monitored gets done. If you don't write something down, you'll never get it done, man. So I recommend, you know, that people follow two habits of highly successful people. What highly successful people do, and success you can define however you wish, right, is begin with the end in mind. Remember success leaves clues. 
and unsuccessful things lead to clues also. So I would say to, if you know what the end goal is, then you know what the ultimate goal is. So I want to have $5,000 of income when I'm 65 to last me for the rest of my life. Well, what do I need to do today to get that? So I have to sit down with someone and have a written plan for how I'm going to do that. And what are going to be some of the uncomfortable things I'm going to have to do to do it? Because no sacrifice gets nothing, right? If you sacrifice something, you'll get something down the road. So you really need to spend, say, okay, I want to have so much money, like I say, every month. And how am I going to do it? How am I, if I'm short so much money today, what do I have to do today to make sure I get up? Maybe I have to borrow money to invest, to make up the pitfall. Interest rates are low. Interest on investment loans are tax deductible. How am I, what am I going to do, right? So how am I going to do it? So again, it comes down to feeling. You know, don't have any feelings, have a direct written plan. It's like I say with that trip. Well, I feel like I'm going to stop at the gas station and maybe fill up some gas and buy some chips or whatever. Well, those are feelings. You don't want to have that. You want to have a money plan. Um, So with some proactive planning, you know, typically 10 years before retirement, like I say, you can walk out the door on your last day with confidence knowing that you can enjoy the rest of your life that you've always envisioned. You've got to have some vision of what you want. What is my life going to look like? And you know what? If you write it down and you monitor it, you will come very close to what you want. It's funny how goals are. Goals in business, goals in life, goals for your kids, for whatever you may do. If you don't have those things, you know, you'll live okay, but you won't live the ultimate life. So do some planning. Sit down with your advisor. Maybe decumulate some of that RSPs that you have. Give me a call if you don't have one. And do some strategic planning. Like I say, if you're 10 years before retirement or 10 years into retirement, you better do some strategic planning because that's the danger zone. Having a plan is so important. You know, there's only so far you can get by feeling around in the dark. And if you've gone pretty far just by feeling around in the dark, maybe you've just gotten lucky. Oh, if you have a plan, you don't have to worry about luck. And that's so big. And I think that all of us should have a plan to call our financial advisor. If you don't have one or you want a second opinion, give Kelvin the money guy a call. That's 416-457-7526. That's 416-457-PLAN. And you can always visit that website, askkelvin.ca. You can listen to past shows there. And you can also click on the link to schedule a call at a time and date of your choosing. That's Ask K E L V. V-I-N dot C-A. Kelvin, thanks a lot for making this another great informative Sunday morning. Yeah, have a great day. And uh, good luck out there uh, in the uh, in the golf, in the golf yeah. world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and stay tuned here at 640 Toronto. The preceding was a paid commercial program. Unless otherwise identified, the guests on the program are employees of or otherwise represent the advertiser. The opinions expressed therein are those of the advertiser and do not necessarily reflect the views and policies of Global News Radio 640 Toronto.